Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the show. This is The Way It Is Naturally. I am the host of this show. My name is Perry Larrabee, and just give me a few seconds. We are going to do a Q&A tonight and a couple of quick announcements as well. Be back in a flash, and we'll get uh, right into the subject matter tonight. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Sorry, I'm not on screen here right now, and just had to had to flip out of there for a for a second. Anyways, let me just. There we go. Okay. Anyways, we're going to do a little screen share. Well, I guess we're not going to do a screen share. Oh well. Okay. Well, that's the way it's going to be tonight. Having a lot of technical issues here this evening, so I do apologize if things go a little bit ragged. Anyways, tonight is going to be a Q and A where I answer some questions uh, from. Um, emails and also from my Facebook groups. And before I get into that, there's going to be a little bit of a change in format. I'm going to uh, be going to, uh, I need to get my mic, mute my mic. Very I think I have to stop broadcasting in the zoo there between the cat and the dogs. Anyways, <laughs> things get interesting. Anyways, as I was saying, I'll uh, be talking about changing the format to, we always had Spotlight Friday, and I think maybe a lot of people tend to want to go out on Friday nights, so I have, um, I'm thinking we're going to be switching Spotlight Friday over into doing this on Mondays from now on, which is just fine. Uh, so we'll call it Spotlight Monday, and then Friday, I think uh, Wednesday we will probably continue on with our series on the different body parts and exercises. And then Friday we'll do a Q&A, unless some other interesting stuff comes up, because I do have a few interesting topics that I do want to cover. Uh, uh, that's for sure. A um, few things that have been nagging at me here in regards to uh, personal training, personal trainers, uh, more fraud stuff out on the Internet. and uh, Yeah things that I think need to be cleared up. Well, we're going to start into some questions here and hopefully get some things clarified. And if you have any comments or you have a question that you would like to have answered, just feel free to jump right in and uh, we'll do our best to get at it and answer it for you. Anyway, so I'm just going to flip on here to uh, one of my applications and I'm going to bring up, um, I'm going to try and do the screen share here just once again here. If you just bear with me. I'm going to do a Chrome tab. Just give me a second here. Let's just see what we got here. See if it wants to do a share for me there. Let's see if we want to go into collection. There we go. Anyways, I don't know. I want to make sure what you got for me on screen. Okay, that looks okay. So temporarily, I am going to take that out. And then we are going to go back in here, and we're going to find a couple of uh, a couple of questions here right away. Okay, so what do we got here? We got Q and A should I eat before or after the gym. That uh, okay, no one's already been answered before. Um, lat for lats. Okay, we're going to pass on that. Okay. How to lose weight. Okay. Let's just go over what the question is here. Not getting a whole lot of cooperation. I almost feel like um, having some, almost like a virus or something on my computer. Uh, this is out of uh, fitness and weight loss tips. And I want to see some reason we missed on the actual question. 
Okay. All right, you know what? We're getting a lot of difficulty here, so I am just going to go ahead into my email and uh, check on some questions there. Okay, so I'll bring out the first one here, and this question here is from a lad by the name of Michael, and Michael asked a question, I am 16 years old. Is that too early an age to start training bodybuilding? Okay, so Michael, um, I don't think it's too early an age to start training bodybuilding. I think you have to be a little bit more um, particular about what you do. I don't think, I mean, let's face it, there's a lot of young kids that are doing a lot of different hard training athletics. I mean, people start into gymnastics and things at a very, very early age. And, you know, whether it's good for them psychologically, I don't know. Uh, some countries, they definitely run a very regimented program, and I don't believe it's probably the best from a psychological point of view, but from a physical point of view, I don't think there's any problems at all. Of course, being a natural platform, I'm going to tell you right off, you're going to get bombarded no matter what gym you go into, especially if you go into, if you only go into the so-called fluff gyms, and it probably won't be as big an issue, but it's still there. Uh, but if you go into a more hard training style gym, you're going to get people coming up to you and uh, trying to get you interested in getting on some type of a drug program. Do yourself a favor, just tell them thanks, but no thanks. You'll be able to do this all on your own. And, you know, if you just, if you need some help, you know, you can always find a little bit of help online. Be very careful who you get that from, okay? Go to find, you know, qualified trainers. And qualified trainers to me are people that have years of experience doesn't necessarily, they don't even have to have a certificate. Certificates mean absolutely nothing, okay? But, you know, do yourself a favor, break into it easy, okay? And be patient because as a natural trainer, the gains are not going to come. Like, you know, I'm sure if you browse the internet, you're seeing all types of, you know, even young lads, you know, and six months, eight months later, you know, they got these physiques that are miles ahead of what they were, you know, just a few months back. And that didn't happen naturally. That happened through drugs. And they're going to be paying a price sooner or later. So do yourself a favor. Stick, uh, stick clean, stick natural, and you will do just fine. And, yes, you can start training. No, no big deal there. Okay, let's just keep moving along here. Um, this is an email from a lady named Jennifer. Jennifer says, how does she put that here? She wants to know, is there any particular exercise or group of exercises in particular that will target my waistline? I you know tend to be reasonably lean everywhere else, but around my waistline, I tend to be carrying a little bit of adipose tissue. Okay, so this question, you know, we have tackled many, many, many times. There is no such thing as spot reduction, okay? You're going to see all types of things, whether it be on the TV, whether it be on the Internet, in particular Facebook groups, and people are always, always going to be trying to, you know, sell you some type of magic pill, magic potion, you know, magic exercise that, you know, that targets this particular group. The uh, fact is, body fat goes off your body or will be removed from your body as your body sees fit. So you everybody's different and everybody gets lean in different areas at different times and your body determines that you can't change that focus uh, there are many things genetically that you cannot alter and this is one of them but everybody eventually here's here's the good news though if you're persistent and you may have to get yourself quite lean in, in some people's cases you know some people can get and just have a problem with their their stubborn lower abdominal area you know it seems to be the last thing to go but once you get it off, then through a regimented process, you can actually get yourself a little less lean, which is a little bit healthier. Because, you know, being super lean is not a super great state to be in. And when I'm talking about super lean, I mean really, really lean. I'm not going to talk percentages because percentages mean very little. You know, 7% on one person does not look like 7% on another person. Okay. I'm just saying visually, you want to have a certain degree of body fat. Uh, no, you should be able to still see, you know, some muscle separation. You should feel, should have nothing extra hanging off you, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So once you get yourself into a super, if you have to get into a super lean state in order to get rid of the, you know, the fat in the area where you think, where you uh, deem problematic. Okay. 
is then you can come back up to a, to a reasonable state and be easy to keep it off from that area or any other area. Because, you know, guaranteed for most people, the fat that is accumulated around their midsection has been either from years of abuse or it could have been from childbearing or for a lot of things. So it came on, uh, you know, either by being just bombarded continually or through a very, you know, almost an intense period of weight gain in the case of pregnancy, okay? So that is the good news, okay? So we're going to move right along here. We're going to pick out another question. Let me just see what we got. Just going to scroll through a few things here. Um, are there any, okay, this is by a gentleman by the name of Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Ryan asks, is there any particular pieces of, uh, if, I have a home gym, and I was looking at some, you know, some specific, some, how does he put this? I'm looking at, because I'm trying hard to read them here. I'm looking at some pieces of equipment that aren't necessarily traditional, uh, such as things like arm blasters and, and stuff like that. And he says, do these pieces of equipment have any validity? Okay, well, you know, it's funny. We can talk about the arm blaster in particular itself. It was, uh, that actually came out probably about the uh, first time we saw Arnold. In it. I mean, the first time, people may have saw a picture, but when they actually started promoting the arm blaster was, you know, a few years into my own training. You know, and everybody looked at it and thought, you know, even some gyms even bought them. But to be quite honest with you, uh, is it going to give you any tremendous growth, any particular growth you couldn't get from doing other ter other varieties of exercises? No, it's not. If you want to have, you know, a little bit of variety in your home gym, you know, it's not a super expensive piece and it's well worth your while. You know, when I think of buying things for your home gym that are going to be worthwhile, things that you really want to invest in, you know, I would be looking at things like, you know, uh, quite cheap things, as a matter of fact, you know, uh, you know, a decent set of mats, uh, how a decent set of arm wraps, maybe knee wraps, and definitely a good belt. You know, these are things that are worth getting and you're going to use them whether you move from that home gym or to a public gym. You know, these are very important things that you can keep with you at all times. And I use those and have used those throughout my whole career. Okay, so those are important. Okay, let's go back into uh, another question here. I'm just going to flake through these if you don't mind. Okay, here's a question from a gentleman by the name of Jim. And Jim asks about the validity of calisthenics when it comes to building muscular size. Is it possible to build a bodybuilding type physique or a, sta a stage worthy type physique through the use of calisthenics? Okay. So I have seen many people asking this question about, you know, how can I build a big set of shoulders or a big chest, you know, using just calisthenics and then people actually writing back to them and trying to sell them some type of calisthenic program that'll do it. Well, here's the bad news. You're never going to build a stage worthy. So that's a reasonable amount of muscle mass body, uh, bodybuilders build through calisthenics. The reason is simple. You need to be increasing intensity. And intensity doesn't mean repetition because when you're doing calisthenics, the only thing you can really do, yeah, you can make certain exercises harder, you know, change the leverage a little bit, but you need to be doing increased resistance. You need to be pyramiding the intensity and you're just not going to be able to do it with calisthenic exercises. Does that mean they don't have a place in somebody's regime? Well, maybe somebody's. They don't have a, a place in mind, not for the goals that I want and the, the goals I want for my clients. But can you build a, a nice physique and a nice muscular build with them? Of course you can. Let's face it. Not everybody wants to be Mr. America, Miss Olympia, whatever the case might be. Some people, they just want to have a nice muscle physique that's free of any excess body fat that they feel good in and they feel strong in and they feel confident in. And you can do those things with a lot of calisthenics, for sure. You just can't take it to the next stage. As it is, especially as a natural, it's tough to get to the next stage using, you know, pyramiding your intensity, you know, uh, through, through increased weight and, and, and different, you know, configurations of training cycles. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, you know, don't stop doing calisthenics because I tell you, you're not going to be able to build a bodybuilder's physique with you're going to be able to build a decent physique, 
you're just not going to be able – don't kid yourself about going into some type of reasonably uh, uh, reasonably upper level of, of competition on calisthenics. It's just not possible, okay? Let's go into another question here. Um, just going to scroll through, and we have – Jennifer here. Jennifer actually talks about creatine. And she wants to know, what is creatine loading? And is it a wise supplement to use? Does it have any real benefit? And are there any side effects? Okay, so there's a few questions in there. Okay, so creatine is very important in the uh, transportation of ATP. Okay, it, it basically creates an energy source within the muscle. Um, it is one of the few supplements that I endorse. Uh, I have been through different phases over the course of 43 years of training now. Excuse me for a second. I went through my first two or three years where I basically used every supplement under the sun. And I mean every one. Supplements, not drugs. So, I mean, things that people probably don't even take at all these days. I mean, things like desiccated, desiccated liver and lecithin. And, you know, I, I literally, my dresser was end to end vitamins and minerals and you name it, it was all there, protein powder. Of course, we didn't have the selection we have now. It was a very minor amount. You could, it was hard to find it anywhere, okay? Um, creatine wasn't even on the market back then. But does it work? You bet it works. I mean, and especially, you know, when you're, if you're a, a, an enhanced athlete, meaning you're using PEDS, I don't know if you're really going to notice that much of a difference with creatine, but that's one thing I don't know. I've never combined, because I don't do anabolics, I've never combined creatine with any of the different anabolics out there, but they are so potent on their own, I can't imagine creatine being, you know, making that much of a difference. Um, the same way as some people combine SARMs and and uh, anabolics, SARMs are can be just as harmful. They, you know, they're definitely not in the same bracket as creatine. Let me tell you, but I can't imagine they're getting much benefit from SARMs if they're using things like uh, you know Danabol and testosterone and uh, Trembolone and you know you name it. You know, or Winstrol, whatever the case might be. Uh, I don't believe they're they're making that much of a difference. But for the natural athlete, creatine is a is a is a great thing, it is. And, you know, generally, you know, if you look at practically all the containers, they all say, you know, five grams is basically, you know, the regular serving size per day. And uh, like anything else, I believe you can overdo it, and I don't believe that you're supposed to be taking huge quantities of it. But I've done some research in the past, and I know that if you go through a create and load every so often, you know, that's a good way to make sure you, it's kind of like getting up to a therapeutic dose uh, some medications the doctor might uh, give to you, uh, basically you have to get up to that therapeutic level. So what a, what a creatine load is, over the course of five to seven days, you might take anywhere from 20 to 30 grams of creatine, okay, broken up over the day. And then after that, then you go down to a maintenance dose of five to 10 grams for the day, okay? And you will notice a difference if you're, mind you, Keep in mind, anytime you rely on any supplement or you want to see how much benefit you're getting from the supplement, you have to be doing everything else. So many people, and we'll get into this probably in some other questions here, so many people, you know, they take creatine, but, you know, they take any supplement, but they kind of use it as their safe drop or their, their, their net because you know, they don't really train all out or, you know, they get lazy here and there or they don't eat the best. If you don't do all the other factors, meaning if you don't train properly, you don't rest and recuperate properly, you don't eat properly, forget about taking any type of supplement, let alone creatine, okay? Because these things are made to make the, the, you know, the, the smaller difference, take it up a level. So if you're not already doing all the things that are required to just get to the base level, you're never going up a level because you aren't doing the other stuff that's required in the first place. So don't waste your money, okay? I think we answered all of her questions on that. Um, 
you know, I don't know if she even asked if there was any difference between men and women, whether there's no difference at all. Both have the same type of requirements uh, as far as at the cellular level and energy levels and what it does within the muscle. So it doesn't matter for the, either sex. That's going to move along here. Get got one or two more questions in, and I want to talk about something as well on top of that. Okay, let's see. Let's scroll through here, find something hopefully good. Um, okay. John asks you, he says, can you build a great set of legs without squats? That's a good question. May have tackled it before. Short answer is, John, of course you can. Is squats a necessary exercise? No. Is it the best all-round leg exercise? For most people, yes. The reason for the squat being so, it's one of those compound movements. Is one of the, you know, excuse me, the three powerlifting movements. It definitely has the ability to develop other muscles because of the coordination that's involved in doing a, a squat or a deep squat. Okay. It's also probably unmatched when it comes to glute development. Okay. Um, it is, is a great exercise. Unfortunately, it's also one of those exercises that scares the heck out of a lot of people. Let's face it, your legs and your back are your two biggest body parts, and that's generally speaking where you can handle the most weight. Okay? And you're, if you're you know, deadlifting or if you're squatting, you know, that's usually you're using poundages you don't see with your other muscle groups. Okay. And I know from I can tell you from 40 some years that there's days where, you know, it's not that I had to psych myself up to want to go to the gym. I had to psych myself up to deal with the weight that was on the bar. You know, it was scary. You know, because you're always thinking, no matter who you have spotting you or whether you have stands or not, there's something mentally up here that's scary about you know, getting stuck under that bar, you know. And most anybody who's trained all out, high intensity, or doesn't even have to be a hit principle, but they've trained all out, has probably got stuck under that bar at least once in their lifetime. I, every one of my uh, training buddies, I, I know what's happened to, you know, had to bail, you know, drop the bar, drop the plates, whatever. It's a scary thing. Okay, so it's never to be taken lightly. And when you're talking the type of weights that people get into in their squats, just keep in mind that, you know, you could easily hurt yourself. So it's also one of those exercises you have to be very careful with. As far as leg development, I don't think it can be surpassed when it comes to all-around leg development. But there's definitely alternatives. I mean, there's combinations of hack squats, um, hack squats, leg press, of varying degrees, okay, leg extensions, that will build you a world-class set of legs if you go all out on them, okay? You need to challenge yourself on those exercises. And, you know, because they're not as scary to do, most hack squat machines, most leg press machines, even though you can, you can get up to a lot of weight on a leg press machine, but they're generally designed in a safe manner where the, the flip of a handle, all of a sudden, you know, you're out of it if you get stuck, okay? let alone whether you have a training partner as a spotter or not, okay? Um, yeah, uh, half squats. Half squats are a nice exercise. I do like them, but I'm very particular. Trying to find a good half squat machine is a problem. A lot of poorly designed half squat machines. And the same with leg extension. You can get on terrible leg extension machines, you know? But when you get a good one, it's a good exercise to do. There's some people out there and some well-known instructors actually have a tremendous following on YouTube that say that leg extensions are a bad exercise to do. In my books, for the biggest part, not, there are exceptions, there's no such thing as a bad exercise. There's bad form. And I'm not talking about the crazy erratic stuff that you see on Jim Fail's videos. People do some crazy stupid stuff on the internet. And these aren't really exercises, They're just stuff they make up in their mind. And half of it is scary and can get them hurt. I mean, how many times have we seen people flipped on their head uh, you know, crushed under, I mean, I, I, I just, I shudder sometimes when I look at how their legs got dropped on and how they didn't just blow their knees out. Uh, you know, you do, the thing is, I don't think people realize you do that once. There's a good chance you're going to have that with you for the rest of your life. So be careful. 
especially with things like the heavy compound movements, squats, deadlifts, and some version of a bench press. I don't do bench press, but a heavy incline press. Make sure you do them always under control, you know, good constant cadence up and down, good spotting or some type of safety mechanism built in, okay? Um, yeah, and you know what? I'll talk about that other stuff later. Here, I'll go find one more question here, I think, okay? Oh, let me just see what I got. Let me just see what I got. Let me go through here. Okay. This question is from a gentleman. I can't pronounce the name. Anyways, they said that, you know, they're getting a lot of conflicting information about how many times a week they should be training a body part. You know, some people are saying once and some people are saying up to three times. He says, can you please elaborate on, on what you feel is the optimum amount of time to train per body, uh, body part per week. Okay. So those who have been following me along, they know that I'm a HIT proponent. And HIT basically says, you know, you're going to be doing one set of an exercise, one working set. And generally speaking, probably no more than about three exercises per body part. And somewhere in the vicinity of once per seven days. Maybe once per six, once per eight, even once per nine. If you're taking those sets to absolute failure and beyond, trust me, your body's going to want that recovery time. And especially if you're a natural athlete, your body's going to want that, okay? People who train their body parts in excess of twice a week, they're not, there's no way they're getting proper recuperation. So uh, I won't talk about drug athletes. So non-natural athletes, if you're training twice a week constantly, there's no way in my books that you're training hard enough or that you're, if you're making results, you could be making better results if you split it up a little differently. The thing that before I branched over and went into HIIT training, I actually had my body part, my body broken up into three different um, days. And I would rotate it. Uh, I took my weekends off, and I worked five days a week. And I would go in, I go day one, day two, day three, and they go day one, day two. And when I came back on the following Monday, I go day three, day one, day two, day three, and that's how I rotate it. So basically, some weeks, certain body parts are getting twice a week, and sometimes they're getting once a week. And with that system, especially on the weekends. I would get that extra recovery, okay? As well, I didn't hesitate if I felt like I needed because I, whether I did hit or not, I took my sets pretty much to the limit. I didn't do a whole lot of negatives back then or, or you know, or definitely, um, or even forced repetitions, but I took it to the end of the set, okay? So, but, so I didn't hesitate if I wanted to, to take an extra day off, like, you know, take a three-day weekend, you know, but you have to be careful with that. There's a big difference between needing for recovery and just being a bit lazy, okay? Keep, you know, make sure you differentiate between the two and get it straight. Anyways, that's going to wrap that up, I think. Uh, we're almost coming into the 30-minute mark. That's where I like to wrap things up. I do apologize for not being able to bring up. I had some technical errors there, okay? And once again, I'm just going to bring it to light. We are going to be moving Spotlight Friday onto Spotlight Monday, and I have a couple people lined up, not necessarily for this coming Monday. Uh, I do believe it was for the fifth, which would be the second one after, and possibly for the one right after that. Um, that's about it right now. So it is Wednesday, so Friday when we come back on, uh, we will be doing what we'll be doing. Um, I think I have a discussion. That's when I'm going to cover this discussion on frauds and fakes. Uh, so we're going to deal with that again and talk about all the fake ways that you can get certified as a trainer. And all these people that you should not be throwing as a client, all these people that you should not be throwing your money away on because you are just throwing your money away on them. Anyways, my name is Perry Larrabee. This is the way it is naturally. I run this show every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If you would like to come on the show and be part of the show, either through Spotlight Mondays, come on and tell your story and inspire others. It's a wonderful way to give back. Or if you want to come on the show, and discuss, help discuss uh, subject matter. It's all great. You do it right from your own living room. All you need is a PC. It can be done on your phone, but better with a PC or a laptop. 
and a cheap set of headphones. And the headphones are only there as a requirement, so you don't get any back feed from the uh, listening to me and my volume in the background, because otherwise it'll break things up. Anyways, I hope you have a good evening. I hope everybody is safe. It is the 23rd of September, coming into fall. I hope fall is treating you well. I want you to get out there. Keep it natural. Train hard. Train bull fierce. Terry Larrabee, wait as naturally. Talk to you again. And that will be a wrap. Thank you.